There are several different ways of starting a fire. If you're doing an outdoor learning activity with young people, you're probably going to want to try and showcase some natural or some traditional ways of starting a fire. As it's raining in Scotland, which it quite often is, uh, you might also want to have some sheets up your sleeves as well to make sure you can actually get a fire going and you can toast your marshmallows or boil some water for your hot chocolate. So this is probably the oldest way of starting a fire. We've got our flint, which is a piece of stone, and steel, which is a piece of metal. The idea is, uh, I'm going to try this, it might not work, that you hit the steel against the flint very quickly and it creates little sparks. You can then use those sparks to catch a light to something and you can use that to start your fire. Once you've got your flint and steel, your matches, your lighter, however you've decided to start the fire, the next thing you want to do is work out how to get those little sparks into a flame. So you're going to need some tinder. A traditional way of starting a fire that you might want to show to the young people you're working with is using a bit of mushroom. And the idea is, again, you've kept this in your pocket nice and warm and dry, you put it on top of the flint and as you strike the flint with the steel, the mushroom will catch a spark and it'll start to smolder. If you don't have time to gather and dry mushrooms, which most people don't, there are a few other ways that you can collect tinder and get the young people you're working with involved as well. So a great way of doing this is using thistledown. It's really, really easy to collect. You can go to your local park and the children can collect it themselves. It might not be entirely practical if it's a really windy day because it is very, very lightweight and it might blow away. Another way of doing it is using wood shavings. And if you've got a group of young people that you trust to use knives, maybe they're slightly older, you've been working with them for a while, it's a good way to introduce them to some knife work as well. So just take your ordinary bits of wood that you've, you've possibly bought to start a fire, uh, get a sharp knife and just carefully make some shavings. And they're nice and lightweight and you can use that to start to light your fire. Uh, if you're looking for something a bit quick and easy off the shelf, another great thing that you can use is just cotton wool pads. So cotton wool pads that you'd use for makeup, tear them open a little bit and they're quite fluffy inside and you can also put a bit of Vaseline on them. Dip it in a little bit of Vaseline, that makes it burn for just a little bit longer and you can use that as a fire lighter. So, the jury is kind of out as to whether you need to use Vaseline or not. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people actually say in their risk assessments that they're not going to use Vaseline. So the choice is entirely up to you. We've got our tinder fungus uh, smouldering. You might need to keep blowing on it to get it glowing. And again, you know, you are holding something very hot quite close to your fingertips. So you might not want all of the young people to try this themselves. But this works really, really well for teenagers and older young people. So we've got that smouldering and next we need it to kind of catch with something. So I'm going to try a little bit of our thistle down. I'm going to put them in our fireball together and I can hear, you can see that the smoke is starting to work and you do have to get quite hands on with this. So don't, don't be afraid. It is hot, but it's not going to do you any real damage. And again, you might need to just blow on it a little bit to really try and get it to catch. Once you've got some flames going from your tinder, you can start to add bigger pieces of flammable material to start to make up a proper fire. A good rule of thumb, and you can tell the young people this if you send them off to collect flammable material on a dry day, is to start off with twigs and sticks the size of your little finger, work your way up to twigs and sticks the size of your thumb, before eventually, once the fire gets nice and hot, they can be the size of your wrist or even bigger logs, depending on the size of your fire pit and how long you want it to burn, whatever is safe for the setting that you're working in. Now, if it's a really, really damp day in Scotland, don't feel like it's cheating if you need to use fire lighters and if you need to use matches or a lighter. That's 
fine. That's what you need to do to make sure the young people you're working with get their campfire. Not a problem at all. Just make sure you're teaching them how to use flammable materials like fire lighters and use matches and lighters safely.